did it for me at all. So I think there was a lot of luck involved with that kind of uh, a role. In terms of the film acting, I think Glenn and, Glenn and I have worked together a lot that we've got a shortcut to talking. So there wasn't this long kind of discourse about characterization. I think he, he, there's a lot of trust between both of us. If he really needs to steer me away from what I'm doing, he will. Otherwise, if what I'm doing is okay, he will let me think my ideas are really, really valuable and even change some of the angles during shooting if I had an idea, you know. So that was a fantastic process, really. So the process was made easier by the fact that Glenn and I know each other pretty well. And I know that if I was breaking the lens of my acting, he'd tell me also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for Sweden, I'm not sure. Uh, this, this wasn't the, my first role on film, but I, I, I think I can quite safely say it's one of the few roles that I have had where, you know, I'm not somebody's mother or auntie or, <laughs> or <laughs> grandmother here, <laughs> for that matter. So um, it was kind of easy, easier in a way because the character is closer to age, uh, closer to my age. Um, and it was nice to be glamorous. La. <laughs> it was nice to have nice hair and nice, you know, designer clothes. <laughs> uh, I, I did, however, I mean, lose quite a bit of weight for it, which uh, I've since put back on <laughs> very proudly. Uh, so I, I think that kind of changes also the, the, the way uh, all the characters I've played before, I mean, the way I look um, in, in this, and uh, I love it just for that. <laughs> Here's about that thing, you know. <laughs> um, well, it was uh, it's my first film, so I was very, very nervous, and after being in the theatre for about more than 10 years, I'm so used to having the audience quite far away, so suddenly I was like, Wah! there's a camera, it's right here, it's, like, it's so distracting, it's just like, oh. So it was, uh, and also in theatre for two hours, you're, you're in the moment for two hours, so your concentration is like, it's straight there, and in this for filming, it's like, cut, stop, cut, stop, and so you really have to pace yourself quite differently, but essentially I think it's the same thing, you're trying to find some kind of truth. I mean, I still have so much to learn, so I'm really grateful to Glenn for the opportunity, but we had, we had so much fun on it, but that's the extent of the preparation that we did, I guess. Mm. And preparing my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Which took much longer. <laughs> Are there any last questions you all have for the director yes. of us? So do you have any more holders to sell? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I'm homeless. I'm depending on the kindness of my friends. <laughs> Stay over at their houses. <laughs> well, speaking of that, what would be your next project or future? <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm going to be working with Ken on several things. Um, Ken has actually written me another script already uh, called Yellow Flowers. Um, it all has to do with colors. Huh? That wasn't meant on purpose. Yellow Flowers is actually um, um, based on a song written by a very close friend of ours, Pam, who's one of the four sisters. So um, basing the film, using her, her song as a theme song of the film. And, and uh, Ken's written that script already. So um, I'm trying to raise financing for that um, all around the world because uh, it's a, it's a Australian, Vietnamese, you know, Korean, Singapore production, you know, production. And uh, we're also working on a stage play, um, and we're also working on a musical, um, a theatre musical. So we're working on several things, yeah. Uh, Film-wise, um, I'm also, I also have a film which I'm working with, with an Australian producer, um, about an Aboriginal boy, but again, financing problems with that. So um, who knows? But um, with Ken, um, yeah, um, hope you look forward to our future collaborations, which will be sooner rather than later. <laughs> yes? Hi, in, in your conversations in Busan and elsewhere, um, how, how does the movie come across to the other audiences? Do you have to see it as a whodunit or a commentary on video plenty? I mean, audiences here might read into the, read into the movie very strong political allegory. Mm -hmm. and, and so, are you um, anxious that that gets across as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, just <coughs> quite apart from the gender, the patriarchal model, of all, all that stuff. Right. Yeah. And finally, I'm struck by how the patriarch is done in by himself. I mean, is that a letdown or is that 
really how it has to happen as opposed to, you know, some other forms of power or power struggle or whatnot. So, two questions. I'll answer the first you can answer the second. I think um, I've, I mean, uh, the, the film, uh, I've sent the film to some European film festivals, and then I sent it to Busan and Tokyo, and the Busan and Tokyo Film Festivals got the film. Um, I don't think the European festivals um, really got it, uh, which is why I chose to premiere in Busan and Tokyo. Uh, because I feel that they come from the same background, same history, same cultural, etc., etc., etc. Patriarchy is still, you know, very uh, strong in those countries, and uh, on that level, they appreciate the film. The, you know, the, the fact that um, they can recognize this structure even within their own families. Um, so I think that. Uh, they got it. They got it. I think it's maybe more difficult for Western audiences to get. Um, maybe because you know the individual and the state is so so, so different there. You know, you know, the individual has a voice in the West, but um, in, in in Asia, we still uh, bow down to authority. You know, and um, the individual voice it has been suppressed. Next question. What was the question again? Um, about is it a cop out that the patriarch does himself in? Is it a cop out? <clears throat> Maybe it is. I, I <laughs> it really depends on what you think. I mean, I, I, I obviously was aware that if we went with that ending, you know, there might be some disappointment. You know, nothing really big, bloody, you know, violent. Uh, I think that it's, it was a choice, uh, and I think there is a certain horror to letting someone die. I mean, someone who, who has, um, you know, has it in them to, to, to stab, stab someone to death, drown someone with their own bare hands is, is either mad, uh, you know, evil or has, um, a crime of passion, you know, type of mentality going on. But I think there's something incredibly cruel about seeing someone who is who is dying. Someone close to you, or at least someone close to your family. And saying, I will let them die. I think there's something to be said about about that kind of violence as well. Um, I don't... <clears throat> it's not a cop-out for me because um, we started on the premise of, you know, this is not a murder mystery, this is a film about uh, a man who is like an immortal, you know, who is not a criminal, he doesn't kill people, um, but, uh, you know, what, what could possibly kill an immortal? <laughs> so we start off from that question, what could kill an immortal? <laughs> and um, we decided that only he could kill himself. And, and, and what is it which could really kill him? It's, you know, yeah. So that, that, that's how, how we started. You know, it was not meant to be a murder mystery. We just used that, that sort of device, or, you know, uh, you know, yeah. Thank right. you. Uh, thank you, Glenn, and uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Oh, yeah, um, I brought uh, post posters, limited edition posters for all of you. So please go get one outside, okay, when, uh, when you all leave. All right, uh, thank you. So if you all enjoyed the film, do uh, spread the word to your family and friends.